G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews to what will probably be the most boring and tedious video I have ever posted on this channel. What am I talking about? Well, here's the the Holibro Copus One, Copus One, I don't know, anyway, this thing here. I noticed when I was doing my first part of the review, now this isn't part two of that review, but I noticed when I was doing part one of that review during the test flight, it uses bugger all current to hover. This thing hovers really low current and I thought, Hmm, wonder why that is. Well, of course, it's the combination of the very lightweight 300 grams, which is you know, pretty light for a store-bought, and the very efficient uh, T-Motors, the T-Motor Air 40s, uh, very, very efficient motors. So even though I've got bullnose props, these are the props that came with these, these bullnose things here, which are not particularly efficient, it was a very low current hover, and I thought, I wonder how long this thing would hover for on a full battery. So I got my favourite battery, which is actually on charge again now. It is the Turnigy Nanotech 40, uh, 45C 1300 4 cell. I mean, they're pretty cheap, they work really well. Not so really well on things that have a huge current draw like this. You can puff the buggers on these things and on the Shuriken X1, but um, if you don't have really high current draws, they're pretty damn good for your average cruiser around mini quad. If, certainly for Team Nano, they're overkill. But I thought I'll charge it up and see how long a flight time I can get. Now, you can tell by the title of this video that it was more than 10 minutes. But can you guess how much more than 10 minutes it was? Remember, this is a racing quad. This is a stretch decks racing quad. Today, the conditions were not very good for this test. I was a bit disappointed because it's very blustery and turbulent. So I chose a little corner of the area here behind a building. But as you'll see, there was still a lot of turbulence. I was actually having to work quite hard to keep this thing still. And of course, the more work you have to do, the more your average current draw goes up. So I suspect the figures I got today will not be, or I can better them. I could better them in two ways. I could fly on a calm day and I could put more efficient props like the cyclones on here. And I'll do that in a future video. But here we go, here's the video. Now, as I say, this could be very long, tedious and boring. What I've got here is I've got a, uh, a camera looking at the model and I've also got the FPV signal coming back. Now, obviously, you're not gonna see much in this video because I'm just hovering in place, but you'll see up and down, up and down, left, right, because of the turbulence. And I'm gonna fast forward through this, obviously, because we don't wanna spend over 10 minutes just watching this thing hover around. But as you can see, the average current draw varies. That's, you know, between three and a half and six amps a little bit. And I think the peak current on this flight was seven amps. That's uh, probably because, you know, you had a big bit of turbulence. I actually had to use quite a bit of throttle when I got stuck in a bit of a, a descending airflow. But, um, you know, there we go. And if we zip forward through the flight, you'll see when we get to the end here, it is just a few seconds short of 14 minutes. 14 minutes, honestly, from a racing mini quad. <laughs> I didn't land until the buzzer went off. As soon as the buzzer went off, I landed. So that was a pretty good indication. I think I used about 1,200 milliamps out of the 1,300 battery. So that's not the best way to treat your batteries, but it was at a very low current draw. So um, I've done this a couple of times, actually, and every time exactly the same amount of time. And so it's obviously the battery's not being damaged by this particular, you know, discharging it right down by 1,200 milliamps because of the low current draw. But um, yeah, 14 minutes, <laughs> it's, it's gobsmacking. I was really surprised because, you know, when you hammer these things, and most of my other quads, I get two and a half to three and a half minutes, you know, having fun. Having fun is about two and a half to three and a half minutes, depending on the battery, depending on the quad, depending on exactly what sort of flying I'm doing. So 14 minutes was just eye-opening. And that opens up the door to something I've really been keen to do. Now, you've probably seen some of my videos in the park on my XJ channel where I'm flying my Foxtech Lightning around, quite trying to fly it very smoothly and gracefully and flowing with the Runcam 3 on it. And I've got some pretty nice video footage out of it because I can do stuff that people on Mavics can't do and people with Phantoms can't do. I can fly between the branches of the trees where the Mavic will get will hung up and fall down and break. Also, because I don't have a gimbal on it, you actually capture the, the flowing, you get the motion effect. It's not just sort of, you know, constant angle with a pan and a tilt. It's a flowing effect as you bank for corners and as you put the nose down to descend. It's really kind of completely different, but it's still aerial video stuff, not mini quad, you know, flip roll, you know, bash bash racing stuff. So I think I might look at building a quad specially designed for that kind of video footage. It'll be a mini quad because mini quads are great, they're tough, they, and they can fit them through really small spaces. So I'm going to build a mini quad with the run cam split because that's the way to make it the lightest because as soon as you put a run cam 3 on here, as you'll have seen in my part one of the review, it changes the handling quite a bit. And in fact, you know, I really underestimated the amount of power I needed to pull out of a power loop and buried it in the dirt. So the run cam 3 would probably knock the hell out of that extended duration. In fact, what's going to, what would happen there is um, it just simply wouldn't be 14 minutes anymore. I might try it with the Runcam 3 on and see what difference it makes. But when you have a really, really light quad, of course, the slightest increase in weight makes a huge difference. 
So I think I might take something. Um, what have I got here? Um, um, I haven't got anything here, but I've got the um, couple of frames here which I need to build up. I might build them really light and try and make myself I have to mount the camera so it's out of the prop because I couldn't use a split in here to do footage because the props are right in the way. So I have to mount it the uh, camera pretty high to get out of the prop arc or pretty far forward. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to build one and see how we go because it's a different style of aerial video from quadcopters and. Who knows, it might catch on, but it's certainly got to, it's going to have applications where your, your Mavics don't and where a, a Mini Quad as such may not have the endurance because I'm pretty sure that with the right props and a lighter build, I could get 15, 16 minutes out of one of these things. Just sort of very slow flying around getting those swoopy shots. That's reaching up into Phantom Mavic territory. That's pretty damn impressive. So let's see how we go. And of course, if I can keep it under 250 grams, People in Canada can build one and fly it around without having to worry about the regulations and the uh, same in a few other countries. So there you go. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens. But I thought you'd just like to see how long this damn thing flew. Unbelievably long. Um, and as I say, in a calm day, it'll fly longer. With, with more efficient props, it'll fly longer. Hmm. How, how, what's the longest flight you've had out of a racing mini quad in terms of trying to make it stay in the air for the longest time? Just hovering or whatever's involved. What sort of flight times do you get if you really want to stretch it? Let us know. I think a lot of people would be very interested. So there you go. In the meantime, thank you for watching. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. If you don't care, then what are you doing here? And I'll see you again soon on RC Model Reviews. Bye for now.